Hey YouTube, so I did the reindeer ride um, with Offroad Consulting at Rash Creek. This is uh, one of the monthly green guider rides at uh, Rash Creek that is um, put on by Offroad Consulting. And uh, I just thought I would include uh, this footage so you could see what the majority of the green guided ride was like. Um, sometimes you get a, like a misconception when people only uh, include the highlights or they only include like the larger obstacles you you get the feeling that like that's all there is and you just like do obstacle after obstacle after obstacle where in fact um the vast majority of a green guided ride is actually um like this green guided um ride level where um it's very flat there's very few obstacles um if there are any obstacles um they're off to the side um and you go over them this type of content um, would be very similar to say like the Rocky Mountain Loop or Dutch John at Uari Park if uh, um, you watch the, the footage there. Um, and once again, um, we did a couple blue obstacles um, and we'll, we'll do like another one I think before the end, the end of the, um, the this ride. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, if, what you'll see here is um, the, um, the obstacle size is very, very minor and um, the main difference between the color of the trails, in my mind, um, has to do with the size of the obstacle and how off canter um, that the trail is. Meaning, um, you know, is a jeep at like a 10 degree angle or a 40 degree angle, and does it feel like it's going to tip over or not, or will it tip over or not? And you'll see that some people, um, even around that tree, went to the left, and some people went to the right. Um, these rides are very much pick your own poison. You, you know, you're not supposed to, to leave the Jeep that's in front of you. Like, you're supposed to stay, you know, within hopefully the distance that you can see them so they don't have to stop. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you have to, to follow their exact tracks. Um, so you'll see a lot of times, like, you know, I notice, oh, there's a rock over here on the right. I'm going to go over this rock on the right. Um, even though the Jeep in front of me didn't go over it, I decided I wanted to go over it just to, to play with it a little bit. The Jeep behind me... They can go to the left or they can go to the right. It's up to them. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to point that out that uh, um, on these guided rides, um, it's not really intended um, for you to, to just always, you know, like be a lemming and, and follow a leader. You actually learn a lot more um, by um, going on your own kind of and, and seeing what happens, like when you go over different obstacles. At the same time, you know, you also need to be safe and don't do anything like ridiculously stupid. Um, but on a lot of these obstacles, you know, they're so small, um, even if you were to like bump into something, um, some little small little obstacle, for the most part, you can just back up and then just go around it. Um, and you can see uh, um, there's actually the other group um, that looked like Kyle's Jeep, but I only saw two Jeeps there, so maybe that wasn't Kyle's Jeep. I'm not sure. So Roush Creek is also known for lots of water, and as you can see, there is like literally, literally, there's almost as much water at Roush Creek as there is dirt humps, like at uh, um, Uari Park. Every single trail, it feels like there is water, like every twenty or thirty feet. That's a, another good reason why you um, always want to go out with somebody else. Imagine if you broke down out here and there was like nobody around. You'd have to like walk for, you know, 10 miles probably or 20 miles to get back to the office. And you'd be walking through all these big watery puddles like over and over and over again. Um, and there's a lot, you know, like in some places you can get around them. But there's a lot of places where they're so wide, you're either walking through briars or you're walking through water. Um, it, you know, and look how cold it is. I mean, you always want to go out with somebody else when you... Um, when you go out, it's just kind of stupid to think that uh, um, you're going to go out by yourself um, and not, at some point, you know, have trouble. So we are on, it looks like the B Trail. You saw that sign that we just went past. And we are actually heading back to the office right now. So basically, um, this is going to be the, the break for lunch. So this is a halfway point. Hey, we're here at Roush for lunch. The other group is rolling out. Um, they have this big garage area right here. Um, I don't know if like normally you can just go in whenever you want or, or whatever, but it was free, like as in like it was available, so uh, we're gonna use it. And uh, so anyway, this is uh, where they do like topless for tatas, and they do like a lot of the different things. And uh, it's the store right here where we're going. So this is a a garage slash picnic area, and uh, 
they'll rearrange these tables um, in different sorts of fashions. Like right now, they're laid out like for dining. But I've seen in times where they'll uh, line them up all together, um, so it's more like a loop, and you have to walk around it. And then they um, they stage people in the middle of it um, to like hand out things. Um, but this is one of the organization rooms that they use. So we're heading back out on the trail um, after we stop for lunch. Some of the trail guides um, try to get you back to the parking lot for lunch. Some of the trail guides um, um, just plan to just stop wherever in the middle of the woods. It just really all depends on um, the trail guide and, and the, the ride and if there's a reason to come back to the middle. Like so um, if you have somebody with you that wants to leave like after half the ride then it makes sense to go back to the parking lot so they can leave. Um, or you know, if um, if there's like a restroom that the women want to use that is in the parking lot, then you know you obviously want to go back for them so they um, they get like a nice you know wonderful bathroom or whatever. Um, but you know, I would say probably nine times out of ten, um, they usually um, stop like in the middle of the woods and you you do lunch in the middle of the woods. You know, and then, um, you know, people always wonder, you know, well, well how, do, how do the restrooms work, you know, and um, it's always the same, you know, like the men go left and the women go right. And the, the way that you can always remember that is, you know, the women go right because they're always right. Um, it sounds a little bit sexist or whatever, but that's um, kind of like the, the way that you remember um, which way you go in the, in the forest. Um, um, and when they say left or right, they mean driver or passenger. Um, but the other way that you could look at it maybe, um, and this might even sound even more sexist, um, is typically, you know, more often than not, like the man is driving and his significant other is um, the passenger. Um, that's just majority of the time, unfortunately, and so majority of the time, if you just get out and, and walk into the woods, like um, you know, the, the driver's going to be going left and the passenger's going to be going right. Um, but there are times um, that you see with a woman driving and a, and a man as a passenger, um, but that is usually something that you see less frequently, um, and maybe that will change in the future. So the trail riding that you're seeing here. Um, this is a green level, um, and this is what a majority of the, of the ride was. Um, and I included all this footage just so people could actually see some of the green footage. Um, although it's not, you know, especially exciting um, obstacles or anything like that, um, I wanted you to actually be able to get a real feel for what the um, the park is like um, if you do the green um, trails. And there is actually one um, badge trail in the park that is this level. It's like green. It's super easy. Um, there are, you know, obviously rocks and stuff that we're driving over. And we are in the dead of winter. Um, this is December 8th. I went and I, I double checked the, the date. So obviously, you know, there's snow on the ground and all the, um, the trees have lost their leaves and everything like that. So it looked, that looked like it was the V1 trail. I don't think that we're on V1. I think V1 is next to us. The other thing to point out is you can see how wide these trails are. Um, in most of these spots, uh, maybe not in that exact spot, but in a lot of them you can put two vehicles side by side. Um, this this park is, has extremely wide trails that are extremely well beat in um, it, it, because it's been established and so many people have been out here on these trails. Um, if you just like look at the trails, um, even without the signs, it's sort of obvious where you, where you should be going. I mean, what I mean by that is, I mean, you can tell, like, there's a route to the left and there's a route to the right, just by by looking. And then you can see here, there's a route to the left and there's a route to the right. And, you know, you don't want to go up where the snow is and where the where the bushes are. Um, it, it's very um, obvious where these trails are. Um, there are other parks, um, like maybe even like AOAA, um, where you get on a, a trail um, and you start looking around and it's really difficult to tell, like, which way to go. Um, because it's just like a big rock garden, and uh, um, you don't have that problem so much at Roush, um, just because the trails just seem like they're so much more beat in. Um, it's just they have the all the um, tire tracks and um, ruts um, of where jeeps have gone before you um, that make it pretty obvious, um, you know, where you should be going and where you should not be going. We stopped up here for a second to let those other jeeps go by. Um, that is probably one of our other groups. Um, if I remember right when we left in the parking lot, uh, most of the people in the parking lot were actually um, part of one of our groups. 
Um, and like I said, I mean, we had two groups going out for the reindeer ride, and then we also had a large training group. So um, it was like 16 of us on the one side, and probably maybe 16 or 20 on the other. So that's, you know, a good 30 or 40 Jeeps that we had out here um, broken into to probably like three groups. Um, so basically, it was similar in size to the number of Jeeps that we had at URI. Um, maybe, maybe bigger. Yeah, probably bigger. I think we had like 25 or to 30. Um, this truck out here, I thought he was doing photography when we came out here. Um, and I ended up like um, talking to the guy. And when I spoke to him, uh, he said he was broken down and he was waiting for somebody to come back and uh, um, bring him parts. You know, and so that's like one of the reasons. I mean, the guy was out here all day. And he never asked for me to give him a ride back. Apparently, he was just sitting there watching his truck and waiting for somebody to run parts out um, there for him. You know, I thought he was doing like a photo shoot or something like that. Um, but that's that's why you don't go out, out by yourself. Anyway, please uh, like and subscribe. Subscribing really helps the channel out. Um, thank you.